they're the only country right now that's offering this to us or to anybody. So, you know, when you have something like that, it doesn't matter whether it's in the United States or in China or in Mexico or, you know, I mean, we went around the world, you know, and it's just, it, it doesn't matter. It's because they're helping people, so. My name is Melissa Peterson, and uh, Cameron Peterson is my son, and he was, he has optic nerve hypoplasia. Cameron was the second child in the United States to be treated for optic nerve hypoplasia through the stem cell and vocal cords in China. I'm Carol Peterson, and I'm a stem cell advocate because my grandson, Cameron Peterson, nobody could help him. And after researching, we found stem cell treatments, read the story about Riley Barlett. That was Cameron's only option, too. So Cameron had stem cell treatments for his optic nerve hyperplasia and his septo-optic dysplasia. When we first saw Stem Cells China on the website, we talked to every doctor we could talk to about it and their opinion of stem cells. And even though a lot of doctors said, don't want to talk about it or we don't believe in it, none of the doctors said it could hurt Cameron. In fact, a few doctors said, well, umbilical stem cells are safe. We don't think that Cameron will ever see because of umbilical stem cells, but we don't believe they'll hurt him. They may help him become healthier, and for Cameron, that would be a big thing. We didn't really know what to expect. We, we were prepared for the worst and not expecting the best. I guess you could put it that way, because we figured that if we took him, he wasn't going to regress. So if we took him there and nothing happened, then he would stay the same. But there was always a glimpse of hope that maybe it would be better. We hoped he could see. We never imagined he would see 2020. But even more than seeing, we wanted him to be healthier. Cameron didn't even eat. Cameron never even finished an eight-ounce bottle. I mean, he just, you know, for Cameron, the next thing would be a stomach tube because he didn't eat. Cameron, he didn't walk or talk or he didn't even crawl. He just laid on his back and didn't do anything. And he had too many sensory issues. So for Cameron, if he could see, yeah, that would be a real blessing. But we wanted his health to just improve. And now Cameron is a totally different little boy. Cameron now can see and play and run and talk. He's totally different since he's been before the treatments. Cameron was, he was just, I mean, he didn't have any control of his body. He couldn't do anything by himself. He couldn't hold his head up. He didn't, I mean, he didn't walk. He didn't crawl. He did everything that he did, I had to do for him. I carried him everywhere. He ate through the bottle. He wouldn't, I mean, he didn't do anything physically, mentally. He was just, he was like, I want to say he was like 18 months when he went there and he was functioning at like, probably like a six month old level. So he was, you know, he was doing every, everything had to be done for him. Um, and then immediately after the stem cell treatments, like the next day, he was showing improvements. He was re reacting to the reflection of the light, and he was, you know, usually if you talk to Cameron, everything that Cameron does is either through his senses or through what he hears. So if you hear him, he didn't move his head a lot, like kind of just, his head was always down like this. And if you talk to him, like he might look at you, but his head was never up. He always just kind of had his head down, like bobbing. But the next day, he had his treatment, and then he had an appointment with the doctor the very next morning for, like, an evaluation. And the doctor came in, and he took the little light reflector, and as soon as he turned on the light, the camera looked right at it. He looked, and it was probably, like, this far from his face. And I don't think he didn't react to stuff like that before then. So, and then eventually it got further. Then we came back and we're like, okay, you know, we're just going to keep watching him and see what happens because he's made progress. We don't know how much he's going to make, but he's made a lot of progress, a lot. And he's been back for like two years, but he can feed himself and he can walk by himself. And he still relies a lot on his senses, but you can tell that he wants to use the vision that he has because he's real interested in it. And he just started walking two months ago. Everywhere that Cameron went, he never actually crawled on all fours. We brought him back from China and he, he, we taught him to sit up. 
he would sit up, but he we would try to put him on his, you know, try to lay him down so he would start crawling. But he didn't want to lay down on his stomach because his face was down and he couldn't see. So he didn't want to be on his stomach. So he, when he learned to crawl, he learned to scoot on his butt. So he would just sit with his legs up and he would push his arms and then he would scoot himself wherever he needed to go. And he did that just up until like two months ago. He did that and then one day, Zach and I were sitting watching TV and he was holding himself against the couch. You know how they like learn, when they learn to walk, they learn to walk against things. He was walking up against the couch and we were just watching TV. I kind of nudged Zach and I was like, look, he's standing up because we'd never really seen him stand up, you know, unless we were like holding him, holding his hand or whatever. I said, oh, look, he's standing up. I think he's going to do something. She could tell he was thinking about it because he was like, do I want them to see me that I can do something or do I want them to just keep doing everything for me? Like you could tell he was contemplating about it. It's like, don't look at him, don't look at him. And just about as soon as I turned my head, I saw out of the corner of my eye, just shot right to the door. And I was like, oh my gosh, Zach, he's walking. And ever since then, I mean, from the moment that he wakes up to the moment he goes to sleep, he's exploring everywhere. He goes, and he'll go, he'll go to someone's house. He's never been there before, but he's not scared anymore because he knows that, you know, he knows that he's in an okay place because he can see what's going on. And he doesn't, you know, he doesn't have to feel a lot anymore. Like, he'll put his hand out occasionally just to make sure he's not going to run into anything. But he's he's exploring a lot, and we never thought he'd be able to do that. And now he is. Our community helped a lot. We just, we got the news, and we called news after news after news after news and just tried to get people to come and we sold the bracelets on the internet, um, Cameron's Miracle of Sight, and people could go onto his website and order bracelets, and we did fundraising that way through the internet. Um, local charities, we did um, a couple of churches, we did like big rummage sales, a couple of the churches, you know, get them stuff to donate, stuff like that. Um, the local like VFW um, did like a big silent auction, and all the people brought stuff, and they did a big auction. We did it that way. We did car washes. Whatever you can do, just you have to rely, you have to reach out to people and just, I mean, if you're looking to do fundraising, it's hard, but it can be done, and it can be done, you know, within six months. You just have to really, really go at it. You really, you can't stop, because if you stop, then people aren't going to think you're serious, and they're not going to they're just going to be like, oh, well, we heard about it once, and now we don't hear about it again. But you have to have it day after day after day after day. You've got to just newspaper, write an article to the newspaper, write a letter to the editor, whatever you have to do. Make sure every week, make sure it's in the newspaper every week. Contact your local you know, news channel. Tell them what's going on. You know, contact a couple of them. You know, branch out into your local you know, counties and stuff like that and just get the word out. And if you put a little kid in front and be like, okay, this is what we're trying to do. People aren't going to say no to a little kid, you know. You just, you just have to, you just have to go at it, and if you just keep pursuing it, it'll happen. That's what we do.